When a feral animal decides to cooperate with humans in getting sterilized, it's a story I just can't resist telling. And this one involves a six-month-old Siamese kitten by the name of Isabelli. Isabelli is a young, female, feral Siamese cat that lives in Corona, California. She's almost a year old cat now, and she lives outside in some bushy areas in a woodsy apartment complex. Meredith and John help her out by feeding her some cat food, and they do that right here at her feeding station on their upstairs apartment landing. Um, she was clearly an, an outdoor cat. She would allow us to pet her, but she had no interest in, in being in the indoors. And uh, when she showed up pregnant one day, we knew we really needed to help her. And um, since she was a stray, and I really didn't know much about her, um, John and I have contacted Susan to help us out with our cats for any health issues or behavioral issues that we were having. And uh, we contacted her about Isabelli and Susan was able to talk to her and uh, kind of explain to her the process. Explaining the process to Isabelli was really intricate. She would go from the wide open spaces of the outdoors to being confined in a carrier in a room inside. Then she would be fasting. Then she and her babies would be transported in carriers in a vehicle go into another cage at the vet's office where they'd be surrounded by humans poking and prodding, then they'd have major surgery, and then they would be inside again for two weeks while they were recovering. So uh, really without Susan, we, we just would have been baiting and trapping them and it would have been kind of tragic to just take them in and have them not understand what was going on and that would have been their only encounter with, uh, with people. Meredith trusted the process. So she called the vet and made the three appointments as soon as the kittens were old enough to be spayed and neuter. And she did that on faith. I was really stressed and nervous because I thought, okay, I have this appointment for these, uh, this cat and these three kittens, but I don't know how I'm going to catch them. How in the world am I gonna catch these, these kittens? I was pretty sure I could get Isabelli, but I didn't know how I was gonna get the kittens. And that evening, the night before uh, the surgery, I heard her meowing on our patio, um, which is kind of unlike her. She usually just sits patiently and waits for me to feed her. And uh, I opened up the door and lo and behold, there was a kitten right at my doorstep. And the kittens were living under a bush. She had to convince them to go up the steps and come to uh, our doorstep, which there's a lot of noise. Um, there aren't a lot of places to hide up on the patio. So uh, it really took a big leap of faith, I think on Isabelli's parts to just present her kittens to me. And I was able to just grab the one uh, kitten and put it in the room. And then about 20 minutes later, I heard the same meow. And lo and behold, there was the second kitten right at my doorstep. Meredith asked me once during a consultation to ask Isabelli why she was sometimes so cantankerous. So I put the question to the cat telepathically. Isabelli made me laugh. She immediately pushed the song into my head from Lady and the Tramp, the song called We Are Siamese If You Please. That song is about twin Siamese cats who wreak havoc and destroy an entire house while making sure the dog gets blamed for all the destruction. It made me laugh in this hilarious telepathic message, but this is how animals communicate with pictures. Isabelli was trying to say that her breed was just a little bit mischievous by nature, just like the cats in the movie. But I'm just so grateful for Susan. Um, Susan made all the difference with just helping the, these animals understand uh, what we were trying to do. and. Um, once they understood, they, they just became willing participants and she actually just brought her kittens to me so that I was able to help her. So it was just a, a fantastic experience.